Hi booktube, this is uh, part one of my March book haul. Uh, got quite a few books here to show you, don't know how that happened. Um, but somehow it does, you know. Um, and the first one I've got to show you is The Woman Warrior by Maxine Hong Kingston. Um, this is um, a book that has been chosen to for us to read in the Feminist Orchestra, the Goodreads Book Club. Um, and this looks like it's um, a memoir of a, a childhood in, in China um, and about the tradition and what it's like to be a woman there in China. don't know much about it, but it's really, really um, got good reviews. It's It looks like it's, you know, going to give you an insight into women's lives somewhere else in the world. So quite happy just to dive into this one. And the cover is beautiful. It's just a beautiful stalk. And look at the lovely salmon in colour and it's Picador classic so yeah that's just stunning, serene, beautiful. So I'll let you know what I think of that when I've read it. Again on The Feminist this book I think has just come out and this is called Do It Like a Woman by Caroline Criado Perez. This is the lady who um, experienced a lot of trolling and um, a lot of um, online hate because of her campaign when they announced that they were going to uh, reissue the, the banknotes that she wanted to campaign for a woman because there were no women on the banknotes and she got a lot of flack off uh, certain people for that um, and obviously that was completely uncalled for and she was successful and now I think we're going to get Jane Austen on the £10 note. Um, so this is, it says on the back, Doing anything like a woman used to be an insult. Uh, now, as the women in this book show, it means being brave, speaking out and taking risks. Changing the world one step at a time. Here, campaigner and journalist Caroline Cradle Perez introduces us to a host of pioneers, including a female fighter pilot in Afghanistan, a Chilean revolutionary, the Russian punks who rocked, rocked against Putin, and the Iranian journalist who uncovered her hair. Gathering stories of private courage and public triumphs, this book is an inspiring celebration of women at, of women at their best. So it just sounds like a really inspiring, fantastic read. Um, so I can't wait to see what this one's all about and I'll let you know. Another one sort of on the feminist theme is Girls Will Be Girls by Ema O'Toole. And again, this is one of the, the another feminist text that has been chosen for the Feminist Orchestra. And it says on the back, um, being a woman is largely about performance, how we dress and modify our bodies, what we say, the roles we play and how we conform to expectations. And I think it goes on to deal with gender stereotyping, um, what it means to act like a girl, um, all those sorts of things. So... Um, yes, yeah, so I think this is quite highly acclaimed actually. I think it's got excellent reviews on Goodreads. Um, so I'm quite keen to see what this one's all about. I've had it on my radar for quite a while, but obviously I'm in the feminist zone at the moment. Uh, the next one is now I um, am on to a couple of novels that I got this month. And this one is called Lobsters by Tom Ellen and Lucy Iverson. And look how pretty it is and I think this is sort of like um, a bit of a, a rom-com really um, but it just looks like fun and I've heard um, I think it was Ellen, Eleanor on Eleanor Reed's channel who said this was a really really good book to just you know a nice one um, I think it's based on if anyone's ever watched Friends where you talk about finding your lobster and your whole claws and you go around the, the, the little tank I think it's about finding your lobster um, because it says Sam and Hannah have just have just the summer before you need to find the one, the lobster. But fate works against them with awkward misunderstandings, the plotting of friends and their own fears of being virgins forever. In the end though it all boils down to love. So it looks like they meet, there's a misunderstanding and then it's all happy ever after. So this sounds like a really good summer read actually, you know one of those books you can read on a, a nice sunny day, sat on a beach or sat in the back garden with a glass of Prosecco, just to just, you know, transport you away. Um, because sometimes you need one of those books that gives you a hug, and it sounds like a hug in a book. Completely different from that one, though, is The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. Um, 
I was having a look at this one and it's actually Janet Ellis who used to work on Blue Peter but it's so um, well reviewed, people seem to like it. The cover is stunning, it's actually a hardback, I don't know if you can see on there, there's like little pictures of, of ladies, beautiful colour um, inside, I'll just show you the end papers inside, that's the end papers inside and then and that is the spine so obviously you know being as shallow as I am I do like a pretty book um, but this is set in Georgian London in the summer of 1763 and it says at 19 and Jacob is awakened to the possibility of joy when she meets Fub the butcher's apprentice and begins to imagine a life of passion with him the only daughter of well-to-do parents and lives a sheltered life her home is a miserable place Though her family want for nothing, her father is uncaring, her mother is ailing, and her baby brother, who taught her to love, is dead. Unfortunately, her parents have already chosen a more suitable husband for her than Fub. But Anne is determined, a determined young woman with an idiosyncratic moral compass. It's in a matter of pursuing her own happiness, she shows no fear or hesitation, even if it means getting a little blood on her hands. A vivid and surprising tale, the butcher's hook brims with the colour and atmosphere of George in London as seen through the eyes of a strange and memorable young woman. So that just sounds like the ideal thing for me. It's a historic novel, it's a bit dark, it's a bit gothic, it's a bit grisly and it sounds like it's got a really feisty kick-ass heroine. Um, so yeah, can't wait to read this one, sounds brill. So yeah, and obviously let's just look again at how pretty it is. There it is, pretty. Um, uh, another book I got is a this is a hardback book and this is called The Button Box um, and this is by Lynn Knight. This is a, a non-fiction book and it says on the front lifting the lid on women's lives and if you can see the picture and this apparently um, is um, I think it sort of tells you a history of women's domestic lives through buttons, um, you know, through the buttons on their clothing, on the shoes, and it just sounds sort of like an absolutely charming uh, way of talking about women's history. Um, it says on the back, a new enchanting and appropriate optic on the history of women's intimate lives, their domestic duties, families, work and fashion. Lynn Knight's book gives a new meaning to micro history, so it sounds absolutely brilliant. It's an absolutely beautiful book. These are the end papers, all these pictures of buttons. Um, and I think each chapter um, has a little button at the, the beginning of it and like this is chapter five the shoe button and so this will sort of like go into um, a historical narrative based around a certain type of button that was being used in history so it sounds fabulous and it's an absolutely beautiful book so just the kind of thing I love social history um, I'm, I love history generally but I love the way um, it affects real people's lives I love seeing great big historical events through the eyes of the people who lived it on a day-to-day -day basis you know putting yourself in the shoes of that person if you'd have been there in that time a uh, little book I've got is um, this is a um, world book day um, edition of a rainbow rowl book um, Kindred Spirits from the best-selling author of Fangirl, Rainbow Rowell, and it says for older readers, and this is just a little £1 edition of a Rainbow Rowell um, book, and that was a, um, for World Book Day this year, so I haven't read it yet, but it just looks like, obviously, I'm getting into Rainbow Rowell now, having just recently read Fangirl, and have Carry On on the shelves. Um, so, yeah, so that was only a little pound, and so supporting World Book Day, so I bought that one. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny little pamphlet of a book, but it's a little Penguin Modern Classic edition of uh, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. It's absolutely tiny, and um, this again was only 99p. Um, but this is like the short story that I do believe is, is sort of like a precursor to The Hunger Games. So um, I saw it and I thought, I'll just grab that and it'll be a quick read. So I can just have a look at that, because I've not read any Shirley Jackson yet. And then in addition to that, we had Mother's Day this month and I've got two children. So my two children, this book was bought for me by my son and this is How It Works, The Mum. And there's a picture of the mum in there. I 
have often been seen in that position usually. I don't know if she has a glass of Prosecco hand nearby, but often with a glass of Prosecco. And these are um, absolute roaring success, these little penguin editions of the, uh, not penguin editions, the ladybird editions um, of these tongue-in-cheek satirical little things. I think there's one on the husband, um, the wife, the hipster, dating, those kind of things. And I am old enough um, where most of my reading as a child was ladybird books because um, that's all we had um, and I, I, all my fairy stories were from uh, Ladybird books and, and I cherished them and I read them over and over. I loved books like The Enormous Turnip and The Princess and the Pea and Snow White. So this really takes me back um, and the illustrations and the writing are just um, in the style as they were when I was a kid. So I haven't read this one yet but obviously it was a great present for Mother's Day. Um, so we'll see how the mum works and let me see how I measure up to that. Um, my daughter bought me this beautiful edition of my favourite book of all time, Jane Eyre. It is um, a penguin cloth bound classic and it's just beautiful. Um, because I mentioned in a previous video that I only had a really cheap, nasty copy of Jane Eyre. So she was listening and she was watching and she bought me this on Mother's Day and it's absolutely stunning. A beautiful book, so I'm so pleased with that. Um, it's even got a little ribbon in it as well. So I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with that, so this beautiful edition of Jane Eyre. Um, these Penguin Clothbound Classics, this is the first one I've got of the Penguin Clothbound Classics, but they are definitely, definitely something I would want to collect. But they're, they're just that thing, isn't it? Because they're that little bit more expensive, you make the decision should I buy it for myself should I not and then you often end up getting a cheaper one um so it's a great thing for someone to buy for a present so that's beautiful um and my final book is a book that I forgot to mention in last month's book haul it might be one that you remember from this book haul already and that it's Jane Eyre um <laughs> This is a beautiful leather-bound classic of uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. If you can see, it's absolutely stunning. This is quite expensive, um, but my mum gave me some money, and so you can't ever have too many editions of Jane Eyre. I know you all understand. You're all book nerds. Um, but yeah, it's got a lovely quote on the back. So it's absolutely beautiful. Um, just dark and sultry inside. Again, the ribbon... Um, yeah, so beautiful. So these are what I have so far in March. Um, maybe there'll be another book haul in March. I don't know. This is why I'm calling it part one because we are only halfway through March and yeah, I know I've got issues with books, but you know, you understand. So there may be another book haul to come. I suspect there will be. Um, let me know what you're reading and what you've got this month and give us a big thing, thumbs up if you like what you see. Leave me some comments down below. I love it when we all get together and chat. And if you like what you see, subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Bye.